Due to the rising crime rates in Johannesburg, South Africa, robotic police scouts are introduced. Tetravale, the robot's manufacturer, assures the public that they have a bulletproof guard key system that only allows the company to make any software updates. Tetravale also created a larger, remote-controlled robot named the Moose, developed by weapons designer and former soldier Vincent Moore. Vincent is against artificial intelligence, believing that human-controlled robots are still safer. Dion Wilson, the developer of the Robotic Scouts, argues that their AI system is developed with true intelligence that can think and feel. At Tetravale Robotics, a robot called Scout-22 is transported in for repairs. The repairman comments how this robot is always damaged soon after deployment. He repairs the robot's antennae and powers it back on. Immediately, Scout-22 arms itself and heads to its position. Meanwhile, a group of thieves, Ninja, Yolandi, Pitbull, and America, reach their gang's base where the leader, Hippo, berates them for failing their last deal. He demands 20 million rands. Otherwise, he kills them. To prove he's serious, Hippo shoots Pitbull then warns the rest that they have seven days to get his money. When scouts arrive in the area, the gang fights the robots while Ninja and his team struggle to escape. Ninja spots the man who took their keys, but he escapes in a car. Scout underscore 22 sees the car and fires at it, causing it to flip. Ninja fights his way to the burning vehicle and retrieves his van's keys. Soon, Scout underscore 22 finds the hippo, who shoots it with a rocket. At Tetravale Robotics, CEO Michelle Bradley announces that the police have ordered 100 new scouts. The staff celebrates and congratulates Dion for his project's continued success. Michelle then encourages Vincent that his project still has a chance. She advises him to keep the project's costs down, but Vincent is tired of getting his project's funding cut. Dion is called to the warehouse to check on Scout-22. Upon seeing the damage, Dion instructs the crew to salvage the CPU and crush the rest of its parts. In their hideout, Ninja's team recuperates. However, Hippo calls Ninja, reminding him that they owe him. Yolandi suggests one final job to pay off Hippo and escape with the rest of the money. Ninja thinks they can rob a van that's transporting cash to a bank, but America knows that the scouts will just come after them. Yolandi formulates a plan to steal a scout's remote from one of the Tetravale employees to allow them to switch the robots off. That evening, Dion arrives home and records a video journal, reporting his progress on his AI programming. After working on the AI code for hours, Dion finally perfects the programming. Dion rushes to the warehouse and tells the crew not to destroy Scout-22. He then announces to Michelle that he has finally created an artificial intelligence smarter than a human. He promises that the AI will be able to judge like a human, but Michelle laughs at his claims. He asks permission to install the program on Scout-22, promising that it won't cost the company anything. Michelle refuses, given all the paperwork that it will lead to. Dion goes to his desk, disappointed about the outcome. After much thought, he decides to proceed anyway. Dion heads to the warehouse and transports Scout-22 by himself. He then takes a guard key chip and loads a few spare parts into his van. Dion drives back to his home, but Ninja's team blocks him and knocks him out. In the hideout, Ninja wakes up Dion and beats him. They demand that he give them the switch to turn off the robots, but Dion reveals that the scouts don't have an off switch. America collects the others, showing them what's in Dion's van. Yolandi gets an idea to have Dion build the robot and program it to fight for them. When they bring this up to Dion, he explains that the robot in his van is still in progress but it can be trained to do whatever they want if it works. He claims that the programming will be like a child evolving and learning. While Dion works on Scout-22, he reveals that the battery is unchangeable and will only run for 5 days. After fixing the hardware, Dion uses the guard key to install the new AI then powers it on. At first, it acts like a scared child, hiding from the humans, but Yolandi convinces it to come out. Dion is happy to see that his program works. The robot becomes curious and slowly learns their language, much to everyone's amusement. Yolandi names the robot Chappie. Ninja then intervenes and pulls Dion out of the scene, threatening him not to return. 
At Tetravale Robotics, Vincent sneaks into the warehouse to retrieve the guard key but finds it missing. Upon accessing the computer, he discovers that the guard key is still installed on Scout underscore 22. In the morning, Chappie explores the hideout and becomes intrigued by random items. Ninja finds it and proceeds to train it to shoot a gun. However, the robot is scared of him. Still, Ninja forces a gun onto Chappie, and it ends up shooting a punching bag instead. Yolandi scolds Ninja, arguing that the robot isn't ready. Ninja is frustrated and reminds them that they're dead if they don't get the money for Hippo. At Tetravale Robotics, Dion researches early child development until Vincent interrupts him. Vincent asks him for the guard key, explaining that he wants to use it to check the security levels for Moose. Dion denies, given that they have protocols against this. Vincent then holds him down and aims a gun at him, blaming him for his project's lack of funds. He demands the guard key again, but Dion still refuses. Vincent pulls the trigger, then laughs, revealing that his gun isn't loaded. Still, Dion is driven to the edge, so he leaves the office, not knowing that Vincent is following him. At the hideout, Yolandi and America teach Chappie. Yolandi convinces Chappie to call her mommy, and America is amused when it starts copying him. Soon, Dion arrives, but Yolandi warns him that Ninja will be back soon. Dion is just happy to see his creation, though he's stunned when it starts talking like a gangster. He asks Chappie to promise him not to do anything illegal, much to Yolandi's disappointment. Dion then shows Chappie a book and teaches him how to paint. Vincent sneaks around the hideout and sees Dion with Chappie. He's surprised to see the robot paint and see the guard key installed on Chappie. Afterward, he drives back to the office. Dion and Yolandi are amazed to see Chappie paint, but their joy is cut short when Ninja arrives. Ninja shoots Dion, but Yolandi pushes him, making him miss. Yolandi argues that they're just teaching Chappie, but Ninja refuses to hear it. Dion threatens to call the police on Ninja for mistreating his robot before leaving. When he's gone, Yolandi and Ninja argue over Chappie, but America receives a call about a job that's worth 600 million rands. To prepare Chappie, Ninja and America take Chappie out and leave him on a lot where a small gang is hanging out, thinking it will teach the robot how to defend itself. They then leave the robot behind, allowing the gang to attack Chappie. Dion arrives home, frustrated over losing his AI to the thugs. He gets a call from Tetravale security, demanding that he return the guard key by the end of the day. Meanwhile, Chappie struggles to return to the hideout. Soon, it rests on an empty lot and meets a dog. Vincent and his team locate Chappie and blast it with an EMP wave to disable it. With Chappie in their van, the men attempt to retrieve the guard key but the robot struggles. Frustrated, Vincent saws off its arm. Once Vincent retrieves the guard key, he moves to dismantle the robot further, but Chappie fights back and escapes. Finally, Chappie arrives at the hideout. Yolandi berates Ninja for allowing it to get hurt. America installs a spare arm on Chappie, allowing it to move again. Later, Yolandi reads the book that Dion left behind for Chappie. Using the book, Yolandi teaches Chappie that it's what's inside that makes it special. The next day, Dion purchases a gun to get Chappie back. In the hideout, Chappie makes a doll to look like Yolandi, but Ninja interrupts him. Ninja apologizes to the robot, promising that he will help it be stronger. Ninja teaches Chappie to act like a gangster, but it refuses to shoot people. This angers Ninja, but America calms him down. America then teaches Chappie to stab people, lying that it will make them sleep. The two then teach Chappie to use other weapons like nunchucks and throwing stars. Afterward, they paint on Chappie and accessorize him before leaving. Ninja instructs Chappie to retrieve a car from a man by threatening him with a gun. However, Chappie drops the gun and uses a wrench instead, destroying the car in the process. As they drive away, Ninja scolds the robots and tells him that they need the car to be nice to sell it. Chappie tries again and successfully steals a few cars. Later, Ninja and America take Chappie to the king's hideout. The gang inside panic upon seeing Chappie, thinking that he's the police. They leave Chappie at the entrance before heading up to see the king. The king offers them weapons and explosives for their heist in exchange for the cars. 
Meanwhile, Chappie inspects the surroundings and finds a dead dog. Ninja returns and tells it that life is hard and it has to fight to survive. Chappie denies this, saying that it's indestructible. However, Ninja points out that it's low in battery. Its battery is melted into its body, so once it runs out, Chappie dies. Ninja then promises to get Chappie a new body if they do the heist, finally convincing the robot to help them. At their hideout, Dion arrives, but Yolandi tells him that Ninja took Chappie. Moments later, Ninja and the rest return. Dion tries to get Chappie's attention, but it ignores him. Dion scolds Chappie for helping Ninja with their crimes, but Chappie argues that Dion made it with a dying battery. Meanwhile, Vincent sneaks back to the warehouse and installs a program for all the remaining scouts. The program causes the scout's firmware to malfunction, resulting in multiple accidents. Chappie's CPU also fries, and Dion panics, aiming a gun at Ninja before taking Chappie away. The city plunges into chaos with the robot scouts offline. Due to this, the human police force is deployed. With his plan successful, Vincent deletes the program that shut down the scouts to leave no trace. However, Dion arrives at the warehouse before the deletion is complete, Dion drags Chappie into a workstation to reboot the robot. When he plugs Chappie into a computer, the computer detects Vincent's program as a virus, so he quarantines it, preventing Vincent from deleting the program on Chappie. Soon, Chappie reboots, and Dion hurries him to leave, but Chappie gets interested in Moose. Chappie gets distracted by another scout body, hoping that transferring itself into the robot will save it. Dion reveals that it's not possible because Chappie is conscious, and therefore not data that can be copied. Hearing this, Chappie steals the neural helmet that controls Moose before running away. Before Dion can chase it, he receives a call from Michelle. A group of police officers enters the warehouse, so Vincent shuts his computer down and leaves. Chappie returns to the hideout and hooks up the neural helmet to a computer. When Yolandi asks what it's doing, it puts the helmet on her to check if it works. Chappie wants to use the helmet's programming to copy its own consciousness into a new body. Meanwhile, Michelle orders Dion to figure out what happened to the scout robots. Vincent tries to use this opportunity to deploy Moose, but Michelle still refuses him. By morning, Chappie tries to run a program to copy its consciousness into the neural helmet but fails. After many tries, Chappie finally loads its consciousness on the computer. Ninja then collects him for the heist. The team gears up for the heist and corners a transport truck. Chappie pulls the officers out of the van and collects the money. During this, Dion finally discovers why the scouts went offline. He confronts Vincent, but a news report of Chappie helping the heist catches his attention. Dion threatens Vincent before leaving to help Chappie. On the road, Chappie confronts the officer he attacked, wondering why he's not sleeping. Chappie apologizes to the officer before leaving. Vincent approaches Michelle and lies that Dion's new AI programming caused the scouts to go offline. He recounts seeing Dion bring in a sentient scout last night. Remembering Dion asking for permission to use the new AI days ago, Michelle is convinced and approves Moose's deployment. Moose is soon activated while Dion rushes to a restricted area to arm himself. He loads the equipment in his van and drives off. Vincent puts on his neural helmet and operates Moose. In the van, Chappie insists that they buy its new body, but Ninja admits that they can't. Realizing that it's been lied to, Chappie becomes aggressive. Dion soon catches up to their van just as Chappie throws Ninja out. Chappie berates everyone for lying to it. Dion, however, informs them that Moose is arriving to destroy Chappie. Dion has gathered weapons to disable Moose, but Chappie no longer wants to fight. Suddenly, Hippo arrives and demands both the money and the robot. Ninja fires at Hippo's gang while Chappie fiddles with the materials in Dion's van. However, Moose arrives, stopping the gunfight. America fires at the robot, but it rips his body apart. Angered, Ninja fires at the machine, and it burns their van in retaliation, burning the money as well. Moose then flies up and launches explosives at them. Vincent laughs at seeing the men scramble away from the bombs. Finally, Vincent spots Dion. 
Chappie finally emerges, fires at the larger robot, and throws a bomb at it. But before Chappie could detonate the bomb, Vincent fires at its arm. Moose shoots at the people, so Chappie takes Yolandi out of the way. Dion gets in his van to escape, but Hippo attacks him to steal the vehicle. Ninja pulls Hippo off the man but gets shot in the leg. Hippo then shoots Dion in the stomach. Ninja slams a shovel at Hippo then calls Chappie to help Dion back into the van. Ninja and Yolandi get into the van and drive off, but Chappie stops to retrieve the neural helmet. Vincent fires at them and damages the helmet before Chappie can get it. Chappie tells Ninja that they have to go back to the Tetravale warehouse to get another helmet to save Dion. Ninja then volunteers to distract Moose while they escape, despite Yolandi's protests. As the van drives away, Ninja fires at Moose. Unwilling to let him die, Yolandi hops out of the van, picks up a gun, and fires it at the machine. Moose then shoots at Yolandi, killing her. Chappie catches Yolandi's body, then spots the detonator nearby. It jumps forward and detonates the bomb, blowing up Moose into pieces. Ninja and Chappie mourn over Yolandi's body. Enraged, Chappie asks Dion who killed his mother and promises to crush the man. Chappie drives into Tetravale Robotics and carries Dion inside. Vincent shoots at Chappie then runs, but the robot throws a wrench on his leg. Vincent limps into the office area, and Chappie continues to pursue, yelling at him for killing Yolandi. The robot beats up Vincent close to death before claiming to have forgiven him. Then, Chappie carries Dion into the warehouse to transfer his consciousness into a robot. Chappie puts the neural helmet on Dion just as the police arrive. The robot activates the program, transferring Dion's consciousness to the spare robot. The spare robot suddenly wakes up as Dion. Dion wants to do the same for Chappie, but with no other spare robot, Chappie has accepted its fate. Dion remembers that Vincent used his computer to transfer the virus to the scouts. He can use it to transfer Chappie's consciousness into another body. Chappie loads up the program while the police are breaking the doors open. Dion activates the program, and Chappie's body goes limp. When the police finally open the doors, Dion escapes into a vent and reunites with Chappie in his new body. At the hideout, Ninja burns all their items in mourning. Amongst Yolandi's items, he finds a flash drive labeled Mommy's Consciousness. Ninja remembers how Chappie used the neural helmet on Yolandi first, successfully copying her consciousness. The next day, they bury Yolandi, and Chappie promises to give her a new body. Due to the events, the authorities have suspended the use of robotic officers. The police have also called a warrant to arrest Chappie. Days later, Chappie remotely accesses Tetravale's robotic warehouse to create a new body for Yolandi.